and let us all that we can to build a better future. Lauren, the Democrats have a problem. I think they have many. That's what we've been talking about. No, no, no. But they really do got a problem. You know what the problem is, folks? I hope everyone's sitting down. I hope everyone's listening. They have a problem reining in big tech or failure to rein in big tech. Shout out again to Case Study QB. So for those of you who don't know, Democrats have been on this super fast rush of censorship. And we can't forget that the Biden-Harris administration and people in the FBI and other secret uh, agencies uh, were quick to come to Facebook and Twitter to try and silence the Hunter Biden laptop story, which they did. They successfully did so and made that story seem like fake news. We've seen a lot of Democratic lawmakers call for stricter censorship on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Hard Lens Media has been hit not once but seven times unfairly. A lot of our other colleagues in independent media have been hit unfairly, some far worse than we've been hit. So this whole idea of Democrats' failure to reign in big tech, it's, again, let's let's again see what MSBNC, uh, BSC is going to be talking about. I mean, MSDNC. I mean, oh, I'm sorry, MSNBC. <laughs> A Democrats attempt to reign in big tech, but after two years in power, they've got little to show for it. Tell us more about that. Yeah, Jonathan and time running out, of course, both because uh, time is likely running out on the Democratic majority, very likely Republicans take the House majority, and time is running out on this year's calendar. So uh, based on on their polling and uh, based on uh, issues in the news, uh, Democrats thought thought they were going to be able to make a big uh, difference on tech, rein in tech, on privacy issues, on antitrust uh, issues, issues regarding content for children. None of that has happened. And why does it matter? It's been pushed out by uh, these other big issues, including the Biden agenda pushed out by COVID. And now the clock is running down. There's even for that lame duck session between the election and the new Congress, even that schedule is jammed. So our colleague, uh, actually his colleague, Margaret Harding McGill, talked to a lot of the tech committee chairman, the chairman who touched this. And Jonathan, I can tell you, they did not sound particularly optimistic about squeezing something in. Some of it, even the House has done it, but the Senate hasn't. And these chairmen know that if you're a House Democratic chairman, this might be your last shot for a good while. Oh, good while. Hey, yeah, let's talk about that good while. Democrats are not going to do jack. Reigning in big tech, what are you going to do? What are you going to do that you haven't done already? The system's already in place, Democrats. Lauren, your thoughts? I mean, yeah, the the laws that have put those corporations at the top of the dog pile have been in place for a long time. And if they wanted to do anything about it, they would have had to, oh, my God, make some laws. <laughs> I want to uh, acknowledge Ilinar, who says Biden's big flex is falling off his bike. Oh my goodness, that that is hilarious right there. Or you said that let's 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 look at another uh, flex, and that is they haven't done anything. To Lauren's point, they haven't done anything in regards to making our lives better. All this hype around Biden and Harris when they got elected into office was they defeated the orange boogeyman, and they've been expecting to ride the wave since then. That's not a monumental feat. Trump was an easy opponent to defeat in 2016. He was an easy opponent to defeat in 2020. But the thing is, you're making him relevant because he's going to run again in 2024, obviously, if he's able to get past his legal crisis. But this whole idea that the Democrats can get stuff done, they've had majorities for a long time. We've seen under the Biden-Harris administration, no push for Medicare for all, no fight for cannabis legalization, no fight to get uh, student debt forgiveness done. And that can be done through executive order with a click of a pen. Biden can get that done through executive order without Congress. But no, we see the Biden-Harris administration bowed out to the Senate parliamentarian, a non-elected official. We've seen the Biden-Harris administration continue on with a lot of domestic and foreign policies from the Trump administration. The kids are still in cages. We got money for war. We're not doing anything about our environment, nothing about climate change. Our infrastructure is falling apart. We have a rising inflation. And Roe v. Wade died under the Biden-Harris administration. People were saying during the Trump administration that people were going to be out there in the streets if anything happened to Roe v. Wade. Where are you? They had a month and a half notice. That memo got leaked. They could I mean, have done something. They were in the streets. They were. They people did protest that. That's... But but they. Uh, but I remember when Trump was in office, people were saying that it would be ongoing and continuous. Uh-huh. That it would never stop. That it would never stop. And if this did happen under Trump's administration, it would be more ongoing. It would be more prevalent. People would be uh-huh. more far. I think people would be 
far more vocal. If Trump was in office and not Biden, we'd see a completely different thing altogether. And I, I again, to your point, have they passed any laws? Have they done anything monumental? Half measures from the Biden-Harris administration. Your final word from you, Lauren. I just don't think that people would have been any more ambivalent than they were like with Biden in office. I think that people in general are burnt out. I think that, you know, it doesn't matter really who is in office. Like I used to think that it did, that it did really matter that like you can't, like if there was too many Republicans in office and they had the majority that things would just get worse and worse and worse. Um, and, you know, they did, but then the Democrats were also in power, like they had the majority and things did not get better. So I think, I don't think that people would have gone the extra mile if Trump was still president when that decision was passed down. I think that it would have been had just as much like, you know, there would be a bunch of protests. There'd be people upset about it. Uh, obviously, people are still talking about it, but there's not as many protests happening. Um, there there was uh, a group of Jewish women in Kentucky just recently who protested, who were protesting Kentucky's abortion ban, uh, saying that it's against the, that abortion ban is against their religious freedoms and their religious uh, beliefs that they mm. should be able to do it. So it's like it is still people are still trying to, to do stuff, but I don't think it would have been much more long lived. I mean, we are as a culture, as a collectiveness, our like anger is so easily swayed and shifted and changed. And, you know, people, it's just so we, we are move on to the next thing so quickly. And I think maybe that's part of what has been done on purpose that mm -hmm. there's always something new to move people over to from like their anger is now somewhere else as opposed to, uh, abortion rights. So it, I don't think it. I think that it would have just been the same thing. True. Maybe I'm cynical, but and, and I, I actually want to read this quote, and maybe I'll try and do a protester chant from this. Shout out to Natalie Williams. Just remember, hey, hey, ho, ho, red or blue, they'll they'll both screw you. Why? Their donors pay them too. Hey, hey, ho, ho, their donors pay them too. <laughs> Well said, Natalie. Uh, so, hey, folks, just vote harder, and maybe things will be different. There you go.